Hey, we've got a new toy on the bench today. This is a uh, Tektronics 500 series module. Uh, the 500 series and the 5000 series are a Tektronix uh, system where you have a mainframe enclosure and uh, you get these modules, all different sorts of test equipment in this standard form factor and you can plug them in and create a test set for whatever thing that you're testing or building or doing at that point in time. Your requirements change, you just unplug one module or whatever modules and you plug the new ones in and you can create a whole new test set. Very, very handy and um, quite good pieces of kit. So this one is the uh, PS503A dual power supply. It gives us a uh, dual uh, output, fully adjustable from 0 to 20 volts. It's got negative and positive 20 volts of 1 amp, current limited as well, and dual tracking. And it's also got a bonus 5 volt 1 amp power supply. So it's kind of a triple power supply, but dual power supply for the adjustable side. Uh, the dual tracking is pretty cool. For If you don't know what that does, um, I'll explain it. It basically just uh, gives you a way to adjust both of the uh, outputs, the negative 20 and plus 20 uh, volts, um, synchronously or synchronized. Uh, so that you, as you turn the knob up and down, they both rise up and down at the same point. But the twist is that if I set one to 10 volts, that's uh, halfway around, and the other one to 20 volts, as I turn this up, these will rise as a percentage of that uh, that knob. So if I turn this to 50%, uh, the one that's at, set to 10 volts will be at 5 volts because that's 50%. 5 volts is 50% of 10 volts. And the one at 20 volts will be at 10 volts because 10 volts is 50% of 20 volts. As I go up to 100%, then the 10 volts will be at 10 volts and the 20 volts will be at 20 volts. And um, it just works like that as a percentage. And that can be very handy for testing circuits where you need to um, rise and lower the voltages in step with each other to test things you know, maybe under voltage or over voltage conditions or bringing a power, uh, power up on a circuit, see how it acts when it's powering up or powering down, all sorts of things anyway. So that's a very handy little feature to have. So let's have a look inside, see what we got, because um, I'm not sure if this thing works, but uh, my goal is to get it fully working and uh, calibrated so I can put it into use. So here we are looking in the nether regions of this unit. Uh, the most obvious thing you've obviously noticed is the uh, two big silver cans here. They're the bulk filter capacitors for the positive and negative uh, supply rails, uh, Sprague units. They don't make this uh, this kind of package anymore, but um, you can cut them open and re restuff them with a new capacitor if you want. Uh, I have seen them before. Uh, I have them in some uh, Fluke DC 1000 volt calibrators, voltage calibrators I've got. Um, yeah, they, they used them in there, so they must have been common for the time, but nowadays they're not so common at all. You can't get them new at all. Uh, I'm not going to just replace them straight up. We'll uh, test the output of this thing on the scope, make sure the ripple is within acceptable limits. If it is, uh, we'll leave them alone. But if uh, if the uh, ripple is too high, we'll look at replacing them somehow. Um, we've got some uh, 30Ds down here. These are also some uh, filter capacitors. They're electrolytic axial capacitors. They can still be bought. You can buy those 30Ds off of um, DigiKey and Mouser. Uh, what else we got? Uh, we'll work from the uh, the left to the right. So first of all, there's a switch here at the back. Like, Not so useful when you can't get to it, but that's uh, doing a special function. Um, in the uh, mainframes, you've got six basic types. You've got the 1-bay, 2-bay, 3-bay, 4-bay, 5-bay, and 6-bay. Uh, the 1, 2, and 3 bays are only a low power output. So if you plug this in, you only get 400 milliamps per rail, not the full 1 amp per rail. So you need a 4 bay, 5 bay, or 6 bay encl uh, enclosure, mainframe, to um, get that 1 amp. And uh, in each of those mainframes, there is a, a single bay that is designated as a high power bay. And when you plug this in, there's a little pin that pushes that switch, tells this power supply that it's got the full power, and then you get the uh, full 1 amp per rail. So moving over a bit, we've got the um, uh, temperature compensated internal power supply reference just around here. And what that's doing is that's acting as a reference so that when you dial in the knobs here, uh, the op amps which are down here, you can see there's a few uh, dip chips around here, uh, they compare the output voltage with the uh, the position of your potentiometer with that internal power supply and then set your output voltage. Um, that's the temperature compensated so that it stays as as even and uh, level as possible. So as this thing warms up and cools down, that reference voltage isn't going to go up and down. It's going to stay level and stable. 
Uh, we got two kind of transistory looking things here with big tabs. They're SCRs. They're um, uh, current over current protection. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, capacitors, just electrolytes there. Actually, United Chemicons, nice brand. Uh, KMCs. Uh, the K means they're 105 degree rated. KMCs are just a standard general purpose capacitor. If they were S SMC or S something something, that's an 85 degree rated capacitor. So these are 105 degree rated, which is a nice touch. And um, we've got a few uh, middle can transistors there, which are producing the um, 27 volts. Uh, for the uh, the two rails, there's two cans there, and we've got oh there it is, there is our five volt regulator. Where is it? Can you see it just at the end of my finger there? That's just a jelly bean part. That's a uh, seven eight oh five uh, TO two twenty package, just bolted to the um, aluminium frame for heat sinking, and that's given us our um, five volt one amp. Nothing too special there. It's just going to be a basic linear regulator with a couple of capacitors either side of it. Uh, not too much going on there at all. We've got our two full bridge rectifiers, everyone's favourite, sitting there, one for each rail. And looks like we've got two big carbon resistors, so I might um, give those a test, make sure they're within spec, because I have found them to drift a little bit. So there's, um, that's pretty much all we got, really. It's a bunch of passives and whatnot. Oh, there's our two calibration pots. One there, and one just down in there. There it is, behind that capacitor. So that's how we uh, calibrate our 20 volt output. So we might have to tweak those uh, once we give it a test. So let's plug this into a mainframe, turn it on, see how it performs. All right, so I've got this thing plugged into my TM5006 uh, mainframe. I don't have a 500 series 6 bay, 5 bay, or 4 bay mainframe. Um, only the, the, the 5000, that's a newer version, slightly different voltage than that like in from the uh, back plane connector, but nothing that's going to affect us today. Uh, the one, two, and threes, I've got a bunch of them. I've got three singles, uh, two doubles, and two triples, but I don't have any four or five, so I've got to use this big stonking unit with a noisy fan and that, but we'll make it through anyway, along with the noise. So uh, I'll turn the unit on. Uh, we'll plug into the, we'll try the negative one first. No output until I turn it on, and still no output. We've got it all turned down. I'll turn the current limits up, just so they don't affect anything. You can see we've got our output lights are on, and uh, let's turn this up. See what happens. Negative six volts, negative nine volts, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 18. Not 20 volts, but that's all right because we've got the little uh, grey knob here on the front. This, these are a dual knob, so you've got the brown one at the back. I guess that's meant to be brown or maybe a greyish that's faded or yellowed. Anyway, we've got the uh, main knob, goes up to 18 volts, but then if we turn the little fine tuning knob, that gives us our, our 20.2, which is absolutely spot on. There should be 20.2, just a bit above 20 volts at the full scale. Uh, that the, the largest knob does 0 to 18 volts, and the small one, for the same turn, gives us a 2 volt uh, range, so you can really dial it in nice and uh, precisely. So let's try the positive 20 and we turn that up 3 volts, 5, 6, 9, 11, 15, 17, 18 again we'll turn the grey knob up, the fine tune, and we got 20.2 fantastic, spot on and we'll turn that down and for the 5 volts we'll plug that in to there and we're getting 4.99 basically spot on this thing's working perfectly so let's see how this tracking function works so I've got the uh, two dials set to two different voltages I've got negative 10 volts here which is on the green uh, negative 20 volt rail and then the positive 20 volt rail the red output is set to 20 volts here so uh, negative 10 plus 20 so this dial the dual tracking at the moment it does nothing if I turn that all the way down and I pull it out then we've activated it see they've both gone to zero volts now this is in control so if I turn that up halfway basically we've got 10 volts here and 5 volts here because as I said before this is as a percentage so at, this is at 50 percent 50 percent of 10 volts is 5 volts 50% of 20 volts is 10 volts. So as we go up, 
you see they go up in proportion to each other as a percentage of this dial. So yeah, there's 15 and 7, so it's like 75%, and go up to 100%. We've got basically 20 volts there, and we've got 10 volts there. So that's what the dual tracking does. You can turn both of these up and down in relation to each other as a function of a percentage of this dial. So that is also working great. Alright, so I've tested all the uh, capacitors and they do test good. Uh, it was easy to test these, you just had to desolder one side of the uh, the wires there. And uh, ran them up to their vo rated voltage. My uh, HP tester will um, output up to 40 volts and these are 40 volt rated. So I was able to test them their full working voltage. And the uh, ESR and the dissipation and their um, capacitance rating is um, all within spec, so that's good. Uh, these ones down here, they're 50 volts, so I'll test them at 40 volts, close enough. And they're good, and I've tested a few of these uh, these uh, United Chemicons, and they're testing good as well, so there's no real reason to replace the capacitors yet. Uh, we'll see how they go with the um, the ripple on the output, we'll test that uh, in the next step, and uh, if that's all good, which I think it will be, they can just stay in there. Um, I also replaced these two resistors, the carbon composite resistors, because they had drifted, so they're being replaced with, uh, I think that's metal oxide, those ones. Um, three watts or something there so that's um not a problem there at all and for the uh voltage regulator that five volt voltage regulator we have some extra capacitance just um to bring it into line with the uh the modern data sheets for these uh, 7805s just a uh, tantalum on the uh, input and a little uh what's that a probably a 0.1 microfarad i think it was from memory on the output just a little bit of extra capacitance there and also over here right near the uh, binding posts so um because it's a long way away, I thought I'll put a uh, 100 microfarad on there just to uh, help things out because it is a bit of a distance from the regulator to the front binding post and um, it can't hurt to put a bit of extra capacitance there either. So uh, let's close this thing up, plug it in, see how it works. Alright, time to run through some checks. Now I didn't have this when I started making this video, but now I do. I've got a TM504 4 bay mainframe. I found it on Yahoo Auctions. I put a bid and... Um, the guy said yes, I actually made an offer on it. He said yes, so I've got one. I've got a four bay module with the high power uh, compartment there. So I'll, uh, I'll make sure it's switched off. I'll show you what I mean when um, it's got the high power. So it's this LED here, it says here 400 milliamps max. If I unplug that and I put it into a normal compartment, if I can get it in, and if I turn that on, you might see that LEDs come on there. That's telling me that it's only got 400 milliamps. If I turn that off, I'll wait for the uh, power to die down. And if I unplug that again, that's that switch at the back here. This on here. There's some uh, divots in the back. If I lift that up, you might be able to see them. Yeah, you can see one there, one there, and one there. That means that this switch on here isn't getting pushed in. But in the end compartment, there is no little hole there. So that means that the, uh, the switch gets pushed in and the module knows that it can pull full power and it lets you know that. So let's plug that into the full power compartment and uh, switch that on. So we've got no lights on because we haven't got the output turned on yet. You see the orange lights come on there? Somewhere down there. And uh, we'll give this thing a bit of a test and see what happens. So uh, we don't need the uh, oscilloscope just yet. It's buzzing all over the screen there. So first of all my piece of paper here says we want to turn it on and check the output voltage with everything turned right down so I've already got all of these dials turned right down I'll turn the output on and we are getting 12 millivolts and we should be getting under uh, where does it say here 100 millivolts so we are way below what we need so that's fantastic uh, minimum of a maximum of 100 millivolts and we're down at 12 millivolts so let's look at the other rail and we're about 11 millivolts the same so that's fantastic when we got it zero volts it's practically zero volts that's perfect so now we want to turn everything right up and we want to be getting between at least 20.1 volts but less than 20.4 and we're getting 20.19 so that's perfect basically 20.2 and on the other side if we turn that up what do we get 20.2 fantastic that's excellent so our voltage range is correct so uh, I won't go through all the tests because there's like four pages of tests here of various functions and stuff but we'll have a look there's load regulation and stuff and all that sort of gear and I've, I've
tested a few of these before. But let's have a look at the uh, ripple and noise because that's going to use the scope. So that's a little bit interesting. All right, I've got my test set up here. Two uh, 10 ohm, 10 watt resistors in series. So I've got a 20 ohm, 20 watt resistor into a, like a binding post adapter thingo. If I can get it on the screen there. So that just lets me uh, wire that in. And then I can plug my uh, scope in there just with a, a BNC to binding post or BNC to banana jack adapter. So that lets me uh, plug them together and I can measure the uh, noise directly across that uh, that resistor there. So that's the noise coming out of this unit. So I've got this uh, all turned up to maximum. So let's plug it in and see what happens. At the moment we've got like, uh, what's well, the background is 3 millivolts peak to peak. That's just like the, the general noise. This is on the most sensitive setting at the moment. Uh, got a little bit of a buzzing going on there, but it's not too bad. So we're at 2 millivolts uh, division, and we're about halfway up to the first division and halfway down to the bottom division for the main bar of noise across there. There's like spikes and spurious stuff, but that's all right. So we're looking about 2 to 3 millivolts of, uh, of the main section of the noise, and that's about what we, uh, we expect with the specifications in the uh, manual. So if I flick over to the other side, and we're about the same there. So that's no worries. I think the capacitors are okay. I could probably replace them if I really were uh, were picky about it, but eh, it's not that bad. I think I'm happy with that, so we'll give that a thumbs up. And that is done. So we've uh, replaced a few drifty carbon composite resistors. Capacitors seem to test okay, and it's all measuring to spec as per the manual. So that is basically done. We can chuck that on the shelf and uh, put it into use. Fantastic. Thumbs up. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and um, stick around. We'll have some more videos for you coming up very soon. We'll see you then.